Well, hello, welcome. This is our first edition of the Forge Podcast. I am Nate Smith, head coach and general manager for the West Michigan Ironmen, and my co-host here probably needs no introduction, Mario Flores, owner and president of the West Michigan Ironmen, also branch manager for Van Dyke Mortgage, Lakeshore Team 131. Yes, sir. Did I do that right? Perfect. Perfect. Probably the only thing I'll do perfect all day, right? But all good. Um, well, we're excited to do this. We're down here at Legends Sports Bar at 446 West Western, right across from the Mercy Health Arena. Um, We've been down here for the official after parties for the West Michigan Ironman games after our victory over Charlotte and our victory over the Central Illinois Royals. What do you, uh, how would you paint the environment down here after a game? Well, when, I, <laughs> when the, we played Charlotte, the first, uh, the, our first game, I came through the parking lot. I'm like, oh my goodness, no one's, no one's here. No one's going to come here because we had switched to the after party to Legends. And uh, so I opened up the door and it was a sea of people. And uh, it, was just, it was a great reaction last game, too. And just a ton of people wall to wall. It was yeah. awesome. It was great. Everybody was having a good time. <clears throat> Everybody was getting along. Everybody was just, it was the atmosphere is a lot different. Yeah, way cool down here afterwards. You know, I think we had a lot of fans down here, um, a lot of you fans down here, players are down here, coaching staff, um, sponsors. It's uh, It was great, you know, and I think the first night they ended up closing down around one. But last the last game they stayed open. Pretty late, and it was a good time. Yeah. It was a good time had by all. Even some, there's some people leading some cheers down here, which may <laughs> that may make a leak video at some point down the road. But uh, we definitely don't want to fuel the fire. Yeah, I guess, no, right no, now. not yet. But um, yeah, so we're excited to be down here. Excited to do the Forge podcast. Uh, you know, we're kind of picking up where Trevor the Dude left off a few years ago. He did the Dude Di- Dives Deep podcast, um, but now the Dude is in the Dakotas and he's out and gone away. So he left us to lead this podcast, and so we are. Um, we're rookies. We have no idea what we're doing, so we're just going to talk. You know what I mean? So, um, first off, we're going to talk a little bit about the last two games and kind of the season review coming up <clears> in the season. You know, last year it was a COVID season, and so we didn't get to play all of our games. We had limited limited seats at the games. Um, we did get four or five games in. It was great. You know, the guys were excited to be out and play, and the fans that were there were awesome. Um, but the season didn't end the way we wanted it to. One, we went down and played a team down in Indianapolis to help them out. Give them a shot to play a game. Went in our favor. We won the game, and then they were supposed to come up and play us for like the divisional championship game, and they never showed. Yeah, which leads us to Charlotte. They didn't show, so Charlotte was the the, the, uh, the winning team in, in the Southern Division. <clears throat> and uh, why don't you pick it up? You, you're much more passionate about this this piece of of the story than I am. I wouldn't call it passionate, but I will say, you know, I was very frustrated that. You know, there we went undefeated. They went undefeated. We were supposed to play, in my opinion, and they chose to play a different team. You know, they got beat, and uh, and uh, I didn't like the way things sh- you know shook out. I thought we gave our fans a great show of what we had to work with, and <clears throat> I thought those were the two best teams in our league. And when they chose not to come play here, I was very disappointed. And I may have poked the bear from the beginning when I found out they weren't coming till they probably arrived. I would not say poke the bear. I would say you kicked that bear square in the, in the, in the uh, private parts yeah. <laughs> a little bit, but in their defense, it was a weird season, the way yeah. weird everything ended up. And I think, you know, their players and their coaching staff wanted to come up here and play after the fact. And, um, you know, obviously, so the very first game of the year, Charlotte does come up here to play us. We kind of, both teams kind of said, hey, this is the championship game that we were supposed to have last year. We were excited about playing it just because we know the caliber of organization they've, they've got. Oh, Urban absolutely. Bryson's been in arena football for a long, long time, their head coach. He's um, you know, he's well known in the arena in the arena game. And so we knew those guys are gonna be prepared to came up and it was a hell of a game. It's one of the best things I've ever been part of and probably seen in a long time or or ever. The coming down to the last play of the game, I mean, the beginning of the game, going back and forth. <clears throat> it took a while, I think, for people to notice, hey, this is a caliber team. I think a lot of people didn't know that they were a good team like like we are. And so I'd say after it was 13 nothing, and then when they scored, I thought things started rocking down at the at the arena, at the Mercy Health Arena, and it was awesome. Right down to the last play of the game, I couldn't believe it. 
it was it was it was something that I, I probably won't see in a while or ever. But yeah, it was one of those games like you know those of you that were there and um, understand there were all kinds of the arena rules that came into play. You know, on, uh, you know, um, safeties on kickoffs, different illegal defenses, got to get a got to get a positive yard in the last minute to keep the clock going. All these different things were going on and um, the intensity level and I, and honestly the respect I think both players had for each other made the game even great. There was some chirping and some trash talk a little bit back and forth, but that. Nothing that I would say is out of the ordinary, and um, it's just two great teams going at it. You know what I mean? And uh, to me, you know, being on the coaching side of things, I mean, you were more in the, in the stands with the fan perspective a little bit. But um, for me, it was it was a great game to be a part of. You know, and it really came down to defense, which is weird in the in the <laughs> arena game. Um, our defense really stepped up. You know, and I think that was something that we had been lacking the last couple of years. And this year, for them to really step up and they had a couple stops. You know, you, you mentioned a minute ago we had thirteen nothing lead right out of the gate. We scored first possession. They start coming down. We get a stop, and all of a sudden we score again. And that ends up honestly being the biggest difference in the game. I'm looking at some of the stats, and I didn't even realize this till we were. I was on my way down here a little while ago, and I looked their time of possession. They had the ball 40 minutes to our 19 minutes. Wow! And so that's I a lot. That. I, I wouldn't have guessed <clears> that, but I mean that just tells you how great our defense was that game, being out on the field. So um, a lot of big hits, and so um, great game. I think another story of the game: um, Sterling Alexander, rookie out of uh, Concordia University, right, out of St. in St. Paul, I believe, Concordia University in St. Paul. He's a rookie. He's from Southfield, Michigan. Um, had four touchdowns, which was a great way to start your professional career, in my opinion. Um, great dude. Like, he's just a phenomenal kid, and he's going to do some great things for us. Alex Carter had a seven-touchdown night, threw six touchdowns, ran for one. Um, again, he's just – he's really the heartbeat of what we're doing offensively. You know, Absolutely. I would say. So um, – yeah, so that was a great game for us. We were excited about it. The fans were crazy. It was a great turnout, one of the better turnouts we've had in a long time. Um, you know, and we the, couldn't – go ahead. Well, that – I mean, it's, it was starting to to be – it's going to be a rivalry now. I mean, oh, yeah. that, that game went over and spilled over to the next day where we get a phone call of maybe an official, didn't see it the same way about the safety, and, you know, we're trying to be nice, and things got a little heated on that conversation, which is only fueling up for this week's game. And it, you know, but in, in one sense, it's it's just the passion that we have and the passion they have. They're a great team. They, I am not putting their team. They're a great team, but but we're pretty damn good too. I would agree, but they're. I would say we're very similar as far as um, organization wise. Yeah, I think I think you can tell by their players that they're they're treated well. They they really have a lot of pride in what they're doing. I think our guys carry that same level of pride and and what they're doing too. So um, so yeah, I mean, before we won't jump into it right quite yet. We got one other game to talk about, but we'll preview kind of the game coming up this week against Charlotte. Um, so this past week, just a couple of days ago, we played the Central Illinois Royals. It was, I guess, you could call it a crossover game. They were from a different league that we played, and we were real fortunate they could come up to play because um, in the league that we're in, the Arena Professional Football League, is that is that fair to say it's a league? Absolutely, it's well, fair to say it's a league. Anyway, we're trying. We're, we'll talk about that later. Um, so they came up, they play in a, a team in a league down in the Chicago area, central Illinois area. Um, and we knew it was not going to be a incredibly competitive game kind of going into it. Um, but looking at the roster, they had some really good players. You know, I just think from our standpoint, you know, chemistry really comes into play and our guys really love to play together. And um, so, you know, obviously it was a little bit of a lopsided victory, but. Um, I, I would be honest with you, though, I'd be honest with you that there was a lot of collisions going on in that game. There's a lot of hard hitting both ways. I mean, they, they brought it. I think to us, and I think there was three touchdowns there that were kind of unique, like the first one, Vandenbosch stripped beginning of the game. Um, you know, we're running the ball. We score on both times that we're running the ball. You take those three touchdowns away, it's, I think it's, you know, competitive, at least from the hitting standpoint, um, from what I saw. I mean, there were some crushing blows throughout Physical, the night. Sure. Yeah, Real. Interesting stat. Interesting stat. Okay. Of all the touchdowns that were scored, even two of their touchdowns, they scored three times. Yep. The two guys that scored for them were on our team last year. That's so they, they, that's were Iron Man, they were Iron Men at one point. You know what I mean? I so I'm not that. saying that our defense let them <clears> score <throat> to make them feel good. And that's not what happened. But I, can, I can allude to that, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, Jarrett Dickey and Darius Cody both had touchdowns. And they used to play. They played for us last year. Um, so it's kind of cool to see them have some success a little bit, you know. So can I talk about that for a second? Yeah. So we get guys, they go to other places, or we play a team like this. Maybe we bring guys on when we go farther. It's every, a stepping stool. For each of them trying to grow, get a different, you know, league. Yeah, because like yeah, there are different levels of arena football, you know, and we're, I would say we're probably smack dab in the middle. There's a couple leagues that are 
um, I would say maybe above what we're doing. And I don't I'm to say so much as far as quality of football, but maybe the number of games they play. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. You know what I mean? Um, geographically, they're in a different location than we are. And then there are a lot of leagues that are going to be underneath kind of what we do kind of a deal. So um, like uh, Jared, Jared Dickey or Darius Cody, excuse me, that was with us last year. He was actually had a, in a, on a tryout with the CIF. He was with the Omaha B for a little while. Got released from them, came out and worked out with us, um, didn't make our 30-man roster, and then, you know, fortunately he got picked up. He's a young dude. He's a good player. and He, he may be in an Ironman uniform down the road. Uh, nice. So, um, but, yeah, we had, we had six different guys score touchdowns in our last game. Patrick LaFere out of Western Michigan University. He's a Spring Lake resident. And Jerry Weston Sr. – or Junior, excuse me. Jerry Weston with an O, even though his check always says an I. And he chirps <laughs> me every time you put an I on his check. So, sorry, Jerry. Um Jerry Mason Partlow had two touchdowns. He was a rookie. Uh, he had a great game. Mike Wynn, uh, you know, has been with us the last couple of years, a phenomenal receiver for us. And then Sterling Alexander had a touchdown in the first in the first quarter. So, you know, at that point, he had five touchdowns in five quarters. And, again, like I said, he's a rookie. We just hope we can hold on to him because he's a guy that, you know, could end up going to a different league on us anytime soon. Like, and that's what we want, right? We're not yeah. holding guys back. No, last year, you know, Keandre Banks Craig did that. He ended up playing in the IFL and, was with you know Green Bay for a little while. Was with the team in Louisville, and now he's back, and we're fortunate to have him with us. And um, he's a hell of a player too, and just a great dude. So um, yeah, we're lucky to have those guys. And then two defensive touchdowns, like you said, Van and Bosch had a little strip for a, for a touchdown um, right out of the gate, kind of set the tone for the entire game. And then uh, Jamal, he can <clears throat> lock up Abby. I have trouble calling him lock up because you made up your own nickname. That doesn't count. <laughs> um, but he had a pick six. And I think it's probably his third or fourth one he's had with us. And um, you know, he's he's a good player. He's a little old. He loses his hair, but Jamal, I love you. You know what I mean. So, so yeah, those that those are the review of those two games. Um, so two and zero as we get ready to, to go down to Charlotte for a big game. Um, but before we do, we're gonna take a minute, and you're gonna hear from some of our sponsors, and we'll be right back and preview the game coming up. Van Dyke Mortgage. We you know we started uh, 1987, July of 1987. The company was founded here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We recruited Mario in to join our company as one of our uh, branches to serve the Muskegon community. Uh, he has grown to uh, five locations, uh, serving people up and down the lake shore. A lot of companies, they're sometimes in it more for themselves and closing that deal for just their monetary reward. And I think with Mario and his company, it's not just that. And I don't know if that always happens in our world. And we are back, still down here at Legend Sports Bar, uh, just across from the Arena, Mercy Health Arena, or Trinity Health Arena, I believe it is now. Mm -hmm. um, we're down here doing our, the first ever podcast called The Forge, and uh, we're getting ready. We're going to preview a little bit of the game coming up. Um, did want to highlight, obviously, Legend Sports Bar is our after party after the games. They have some signature drinks down here that are made especially for the Ironmen. They have the mm -hmm. Effie Fiery Bull, which is basically a cinnamon old-fashioned. Um, if it's you good. like that, it's got some... Uh, Fireball in it, which I know somebody likes Fireball. Well. I'm not going to say who, but he's uh, he's next to me. He's my co-host. And uh, they also have a, a signature drink called the Iron Men TD, which is a vanilla old fashioned. So uh, come down here after the game, and they got everything else you want to, you know, Sprite, Diet Coke. It's just a great environment. It is. It's, it's a great place. How uh, Jason has uh, turned this into, you know, back when it was a long time ago, and it just it's just an awesome feel down here. It fits what's going down downtown. Our it players is. love it. I love it. I know you like it. It's love good. It. It's good. <laughs> good place to be. So um, we did during the break. <clears throat> one of our one of our our cohorts over here, Billy, said we should have made a mention of one of the biggest hits that we've seen in arena football down at least in our arena in a while in a while um, on one of the kickoffs. Gentleman from uh, the Central Illinois team caught the ball, came running up field, and Ryan Sauce Williams laid him out. And Sauce is not a big fella. He probably 160 pounds, maybe, if you, he's got 20 pound weights in his pocket. But he put <laughs> everything into that hit, and uh, I was man. shocked. I was, I didn't think he was going to get up that that gentleman from uh, the Royals. I was, I was surprised, and I thought we were going to have to pick him up off the stretcher. I, I mean, he just got filleted. <laughs> he he got lit, and and if you watch the film, and you can watch the replay on Catchmark Sportsnet, uh, they have a live stream on there, and I want to say it's at the 115 mark. Not that I've watched it a few times, but you can go back and watch that. And really cool thing, Eric Zane, one of our out of our announcers, he and, and Coach uh, Taylor, that the following after the morning after the game, Eric Zane and I were texting back and forth, and he said, "How about that hit on the kickoff?" And I said, "That was amazing." He said, "I called it right before it happened," and he does. As the play is going, he makes a comment, and all of a sudden, 
boom, he just got lit up. Carter with a kick here. Beautiful, beautiful kick. And we're going to get a return on this one. Oh, this guy's going to hate his life. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, no! Oh, break out the smelling salts, coach. Well in the dune. I'm glad he got up. That dude is tough as, tough as balls. Watch this. He's like, oh, this is a great day. I'm having so much fun. Oh! <laughs> Definitely go watch it. Our games are streaming again on Catchmark Sportsnet. Um, and Catchmark, one of our sponsors I'm going to talk about here in a moment. But they are, I, I can't even begin to tell you what the great stuff they do for us. So, um, so yeah, go ahead and check that out. Check out that stream. Game coming up this week. As we're preparing, we are right now recording this, you know, on a, on a Tuesday. Um, so we're a couple days away from heading down to Charlotte, North Carolina to, to the rematch or a second second game in the series against the Charlotte Thunder. What do you think, boss? What do you expect? Well, what do you expect from us? I'm supposed to say, you know, you know, I like our chances. You know, we're probably the underdog going into a hostile environment. Um, but as a owner and president, I've been I've been learning a lot of what it takes to get the team to, you know, we're normally going to Chicago or, you know, in, you know, somewhere around here. You know, we're going to North Carolina and with the, the, the we were able to get a charter. We couldn't get plane tickets for all the guys to get on at one time and then getting the hotel and then getting their food. on. I mean, it's it's we are lucky to have the sponsors that we have or we there's no way in hell we could make this trip. And um you know, it's going to be a great game. It's going to be a competitive game. You know, I believe in my heart we're going to win, but I'm a little biased. But we are definitely going to hostile territory. Um, after the game, uh, their coach said, hey, I think they got already 3,000 tickets sold. It's an 8,200 um, arena. So they're really looking forward to try to put on us. But, you know, we got to get in there, do our business, and get the hell out of there right away. Yeah. And that's and honestly, I, I'm looking forward to that to see what our team is made of. You know, um, we have a, a way that we communicate, and I talked to them a little bit today just about being locked in and getting focused right now because, you know, as a competitor, we want them to be in that environment. We want to have the adversity. We want to have that level of competition. Um, and there's obviously going to be distractions. You know, there's history between the two teams. There's history in what's gone on. The last game was as great of a game as we've had. You know, it had some controversy as well. Um, so I, I, it's going to be a great game. You know, I think it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be like like – you were alluding to it's it's a process to get the guys down there you know guys got to get some time off work we've got a couple of different ways the guys are going to get down there but um you know ultimately we want to get down there regroup get locked in and hopefully um we'll play a heck of a game so and, and i will say i think our fans are locked in oh yeah i mean i know we have some maybe naysayers out there mm -hmm. of in the past and rightfully so of of our level of competition you know we're really trying to get the best people possible that we get here that can um you know the city can sustain that kind of entertainment you know, we go too high, it's just not feasible for anybody. Go too low, we get the blowout. So we're trying to do our best to to make that an equal, you know, uh, feel all the way across the board. But I would tell you this, if you were a fan down here um, after the game, you know, we we're all singing a little bit and we we're all in one tune. I was amazed because, you know, um, I've never seen that before either, where yeah. the whole place was just singing one song preparing for this game and that sets the tone i think it does and like i said i alluded earlier is that there's you know i'll, I'll tell you, i'll give you the, the the oral depiction of what took place everybody's down here and iron nation was down here fans and you know um our players and sponsors like i said everybody's just hanging out having a good time after that game um and then mario got up and led the choir um just in, in got the entire place was singing together and it was a really cool moment you know what i mean it was it was everything that we do arena football for. I mean, it was, yes, we want our players to compete. We want our guys to give our opportunity. But really to be a part of what's going on down here in Muskegon is something special. And uh, even I said after the game, I was talking to Scott DeCamp from Catchmark Sportsnet in the interview after the game. I was telling him that, you know, when was the last time you saw the wave at, at in, in the arena? You know what I mean? And uh, to see something like that go on, the fans having a great time. Um, we expect that when we're down in Charlotte. We expect their fans to be equally as passionate and equally going on because they've been around like we have been. So um, it's exciting. It's why we do these games, and it's going to be going to be a heck of a game. And I believe their game is going to be streaming live, um, and so we will post that on our Facebook page. Unfortunately, it won't be done by Catchmark Sportsnet, so um, 
I'm not going to say that the quality is not going to be what what our guys do, but I'm I can say it. That. It's not even close. But <laughs> so again, I'm a little biased. That's why does a badass job. Keep an eye on our Facebook page as well because uh, I know that Legends here is working. I'm going to be streaming the game down here, so you can come down here, watch the game on their big TVs, um, and root us on and, and celebrate in victory after after the game's over. So. Um, before we take one more break, we want to highlight a few sponsors. Typically, we're going to have some sponsors come in here and we'll interview them. And obviously, Mario's right here with Van Dyke Mortgage. You can talk about them a little bit. But one of our other top sponsors I've already talked about a little bit is Catchmark and Catchmark Sportsnet. Um, and I would tell you this, uh, Brent and Jeff have been sponsors of ours for probably the last four or five years. Um, they reached out to me years a while back. Hey, we're interested in kind of, you know, kind of what's going on down the arena. I went and met with them. I had no idea what Catchmark was. I had no clue what A it was. I, I literally was clueless. Went and met with them down. They had an office. I believe they still have an office down by the weather ball, right? Down by the weather ball, blinking bright, rain or snow in sight. <laughs> um, but they were down there. I talked to them. They were telling me what they used to do. And I joke about this. They were telling me about a bovine uh, bovine and pregnancy tracking system, like how they would talk about how cows would get inseminated and they would track this stuff. And I'm like, hey, what the hell is going on here? I'm like, who are these guys? What are they doing? <laughs> you know, I'm not going to drink anything to give me. No diet due from them. Um but um, yeah, I kind of made a joke that it was Tinder for cows or something like that. But uh, they have been a tremendous uh, supporter of what we what we do. You know what I mean? Obviously, they branched into a whole new um, sports, you know, reporting and sports kind of thing. They do a lot of stuff here in West Michigan, with West Michigan Conference specifically. Um, but covering us, they are a great company to work with. They do cybersecurity. They do IT work. They do all kinds of different um, they're problem solvers. You know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't know there was a problem keeping track of how cows got pregnant, but they figured out how to track it. You know what I mean? So um, great, great guys, great people to work with. Like I said, they do our streaming. Billy the man over there is just a phenomenal dude. We had a little challenge this past week. I thought it was a challenge what we we're going to do it at our game. I said something to him before the game. And he's like, scuzzy this, dongle this, something about I don't know what's going on. And all of a sudden, everything's fixed. And it was um, great, great people to work with. So look them up online. Catchmarkit.com, I believe, is where they're at. They got an office in Montague, they got an office in. See, and that's what um, you gotta have. You gotta have people that know their role oh. and then just get it done, not worry about it, right? And then I tell you, that is exactly what we've done with Catchmark. We were talking the other day and I said, there's some great buzz and some great things going on with the Ironman. And it's not like I think we've changed a ton, but now we've got people that are like being able to show everybody else what's going on. And 100%. so they are tremendous, tremendous sponsors of ours. We cannot begin to say enough how lucky we are to have them. So Catchmark Sportsnet, Catchmark IT. Great dudes, um, yeah, awesome sponsors of ours. You're going to talk about Van Dyke Mortgage, right? Right now or next? Yeah, right now. Okay, right now. So Van Dyke Mortgage. So um, 2019, I met with uh, Tom Van Dyke, and he's he said, "Hey, what do you need? What do you need to get more loans out in the Skeegan area?" Who's and Tom Van Dyke? Tom Van Dyke is the Silver Fox. He is the owner of Van Dyke Mortgage since 1987. He's president owner. Um, he is a great, great, great man. Uh, he's one of my mentors. He runs the show for Van Dyke Mortgage. We're licensed in, I believe, 47 states. We have branches all over the country. Um, Muskegon, I'm proudly to say we've always been in the top 10 the last 10 years. We've always, now we're in the top, uh, we moved to top seven. I'm proud to say we're in the top three and we were number one branch last month. I, none of this could be possible without Van Dyke Mortgage and Tom Van Dyke. Um, I went to him of a need that I saw, and he came down the arena, actually. And it was right in the middle of that Mercy Health um, naming, right, yeah, transition, naming rights. And when when, uh, when Tom got here, he's like, I want my name on the building. I said, well, that's too late. <laughs> but, but it could have. That was close that we could have been in the Van Dyke Mortgage arena. And we settled for some, you know, signage on the, on the, on the, uh, on the building one there. The and that turned yeah. one of the entrances and then that <clears throat> turned into the Van Dyke mortgage convention center. But before that was a big deal, I needed help with the Ironman. I wanted, my goal was to bring on a sponsor that we didn't have to worry about if we sold one ticket. My, my deal was we need to be debt free. We need to be a way. This would be a way to leverage our referral partners, our realtors, investors, um, uh, anybody that w wants to, be part of referring business to us. And we we give referrals back. So it's kind of like a big B&I with no fees and then we just help each other. And, I, and what I mean by that is Tom made the commitment to invest in West Michigan Ironman. 
And he didn't know it then, but what he was investing was City Muskegon and giving back to our referral partners. So anybody that's a sponsor of ours, we have done business personally with them through the mortgage side or personally and vice versa. We have not taken on every sponsor. And I say that of sometimes it's just not a good fit or good, a good partnership or good marriage. And we have turned down some sponsors because I only want people that are going to invest in the community, be part of our vision, be excited and, and know they're going to get a value back. And, and I hope that we do that with every single one of our sponsors and fans and, you know, Tom Van Dyke's to pave that way to bring this and keep, you know, West Michigan, um, uh, the West Michigan Ironman here. It's kind of funny because now he thinks we should put one in every major city, <laughs> uh, arena football team, Our which he's Van probably Dyke, Van Dyke League, which I don't think he's probably wrong on that. BDAL. You know? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so you know, we're really proud to say that you know they're one of our biggest sponsors, if not the biggest, and uh, you know we don't take that lightly. You know, he doesn't put his name on something that he's not endorsing, and uh, you know I, I've had the privilege to be with him, you know, for 18 years. I think you hit on it. I think you know when he invested, it wasn't just in the Ironman; it was in Muskegon. And I think that's kind of the thread for most of our sponsors. I mean, yes, they love arena football. They love what's going on down here. But even when even talking about Catchmark, I think there's a whole investment in what's going on in Muskegon and, and just the, the water table being ri- ri- risen. Mm-hmm. Rise? Oh, water. yeah. I don't know how you say it. It's definitely getting cleansed and changed. Yeah. I would say that. It's awesome. So Catchmark, IT, Catchmark Technologies, Catchmark Sportsnet, Van Dyke Mortgage. Check them out. Um, we got one more break, and then we're going to come back, and we have an interview with one of our players the dreadlock dream boat yes sir mr d white will be with us you know that while necessary technology can be confusing complex expensive and a frustrating endeavor catchmark technologies can help make that technology simple and clean so that your business can easily get its product or service to the market whether you need technical support structured cabling camera systems cybersecurity, or digital media advice catchmark technologies is your one-stop tech service shop shoot us a call at 616-384-4616 visit our website at catchmarkit.com or stop into one of our offices in grand rapids or whitehall catchmark technologies west michigan's technology problem solvers welcome back we're still down here at legends but uh as you can see, we got a guest with us now, Mr. Dyron White, aka the Dreadlock Dreamboat. Thanks for joining us, D. White. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. D. White is an offensive lineman. Uh, he played college football at Southern Miss. We get that wrong all the time, don't we? Most of the time. And he gets very angry about it. And if you can't tell, he's from Louisiana. Yep. Um, so he's got a little bit of an accent. And I was joking in the break here that uh, we may have put subtitles up there so you can understand what he's saying. But usually it only happens when he gets angry. And there was a game last year, last week. He comes off the field. We happened, we scored. But he comes out and he looks at me. He said, what do you back on Hubba? And I said, what? He said, Hubba, guess I'm on again. And I said, D. White, what? He looks at me very sternly. And you do this, you just said it a minute ago. Yeah. Where did the back side linebacker? And I was like, I don't have a clue. And, and Diesel looks yeah. at me and he said, he wants to know who got the backside linebacker. <laughs> and I was like, hey, thanks. I don't know. And it was just like, he was, he gets very passionate when things don't go, go right, right. And that, that accent that. gets thick. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. welcome. Thanks for being here. Appreciate um, it. So, tell us a little bit about when did you start playing football? Where are you from? What did you do when you were a little little tech? Because I don't think you were ever a little tech. How tall are you right now? I'm 6'5". Six, 6'5". Five. Six, five. Yeah. I uh, started playing football when I was 13 years old. My mom, she didn't want me to play because I, I, was, I was taller than regular kids. So, she thought <laughs> I would be playing with the older kids. But I did baseball, basketball, and soccer. But I always wanted to. Wait, wait, wait. You played soccer? Wait a minute. I yeah. never knew that. <laughs> you did soccer? Yeah, I just, yeah when, when I was a kid, when I was okay. like four or five years old. Yes. Oh, four or five. Okay. Yeah. Were you like, what, five foot tall then? Well, not necessarily, <laughs> but there's a, a ba- baseball card where it had my name, my height, and my weight. I was, I think I was five or six years old when I was like four, eight, something like that. <laughs> no dress yeah. then, though. No dress, short hair. Yeah. yeah I okay. Used to, I didn't start growing my hair until high school. Yeah, baseball, soccer, and basketball. But I always wanted to, you know, play football. But mom just said, no, wait till you get a little older. So 13 years old in junior high, I started trying out for it and liked it, loved it ever since. That's cool. So, yeah, originally from Slidell, Louisiana, which is 15 minutes outside New Orleans. I know a lot of people know where that's at, but Slidell's like on the upper end of it. So I always try to tell people. What was that that show I always chirped you about? 
uh, Live PD. Live PD from Slidell, the, Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I knew some of the cops who were on that show most yeah, of the time. Yeah. So, yeah. So I used to joke with them about that until one time they got really pissed and I stopped. <laughs> yeah, I, I would stop too. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. they're not filming no more. So, no. thank God. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. High school, you played, where'd you play high school ball at? I played uh, ball at Slidell High. Slidell High. What, what was their, what's their mascot? Uh, the Tigers. The Tigers. Yep. All right. So, did yeah. you grow up an LSU fan? Yeah. 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 I like them. Yep. Yep. Okay. So then you you went played high school. Mm -hmm. Okay. All the way through. I saw. I read somewhere recently that you gave up zero sacks your junior year. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, not yep. bad. Yep. Not so bad. Not so yep. bad. Tell us about your recruiting process. How'd you end up uh, where you ended up in college? Well, I was like a a late bloomer. You know, I wasn't really like a high recruit. You know, so but I was getting looked at. You know, so I had some schools like ULL, Tulane, and of course Southern Miss. You know. But for me, I, I wanted to go out, you know, out of Louisiana, you know, see new things. I like to see things. So that's why I decided to choose a Southern Miss, though, which is not that far from my hometown. So, so yeah, it was pretty good. Your parents come watch? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, your you know. parents are pretty cool. They've been up here for a couple of times. Yeah, they came up here three years ago to catch a game, and they loved it. Yeah, they, I, they, I, they I want to come back. Your dad. Big tall guy yep. in the concourse for the game. I shake his hand and wraps around my hand. I'm like, oh, "You're D White's dad." <laughs> Knew immediately. I got I got tasted that hand while I was a kid most of the time, <laughs> in the club, so it was not well. So yeah, that's funny. And you got brothers, sisters? I got one sister. You got one sister. She older, yeah. younger? She's younger by four years. She's younger by four years. Yep. Cool. So what is your what's your like? So when you played at Southern Miss, mm -hmm. what was your like your greatest memory there? My greatest memory, greatest game, anything like that. Well, the greatest game is we won conference. We mm -hmm. went to Houston. They were number six ranked in the nation. We went to their house, hostile environment, Sunday, a Saturday afternoon game. Uh, they had uh, Case Keenum mm -hmm. there. Oh. So, he, yeah, so he was breaking all records and stuff like that. So we went up there and just shut him down. That's one great. One at their house, so it was great. That's pretty cool. So being in the hostile environment, yeah, you're going to be used to that this upcoming Saturday, right? Oh, yeah. We'll be good to go. So I also read uh, on your in your college bio that you graded out a hundred percent against Navy and against Rice. Yes, sir. That's well, crazy. Well, especially the college level. Yeah, but we were well, we were beating them. You know what I'm saying? So they decided to put the backups in. So I got in. Don't, so don't tell people that. But still, no. But yeah, but hundred percent is hundred percent. Well, yeah, you know, but I still won't come in there and you know do my job. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's cool. So. Southern Miss, mm -hmm. you get them playing there. Um, then where, how'd you end? Tell us about that that period of time until you ended up here in West Michigan. Well, I was playing for a team called the Green Bay Blizzard in the IFL. Mm -hmm. uh, I got there maybe in mid-March, play, uh, play a few games. I ended up tearing my meniscus, so out for the season. But I wanted to prove to myself what can I do when I get well, so I decided mm -hmm. to go back up there the next year play with them for a little bit, but sooner or later around April, coach called me in the room, told me like, we feel like we're wasting your time, we're not getting enough film. So we're going to send you to a team in Michigan that needs office alignment. Now, mind you, I've never been to Michigan before. So <laughs> I was like, okay, it's going to be another venture. So I'm, and I'm looking forward to it, you know, another challenge for me. So when I got up here, uh, got from a you know, coach to pick me up, Show me around the place, and I'm like, I can kind of, you know, vibe gel here, something like mm -hmm. that, you know. Yeah. And meeting the new guys, you know, they all welcome me in. And, and you know what? I said, I can do it. You know, I can come back and play with them again, you know. And six years later, we haven't got rid of them. Yep. <clears throat> six He's years a later. Oh, yeah. So what do you what do you what do you think it's like playing here at West Michigan? What's it like playing it in the Foundry? Oh, it's awesome, amazing. The crowd, atmosphere. You know, every time we score a touchdown, you know. And quite playing with Alex Carter, you know what I'm saying? I love blocking for him, man. Yeah, he's he's yeah. he's a difference maker, isn't he? He is, he is, sure is. I'll never forget uh two years ago, maybe maybe it was the pre COVID year, um, the dreadlock dreamboat, his nickname was revealed somehow. I don't know where that came from, but he came mm -hmm. out and then I looked up in the in the crowd and there was somebody had a had a had a sign with oh, a yeah. cartoon drawing of the dreadlock dreamboat up there. Oh, yeah. So even the old lineman's got some fans out there. So oh, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. So, what was? Tell me a little bit, real quick, because I'm a high school football coach. Mm -hmm. What was your high school coach like? How did how, did he have an impact on you? 
Oh yeah, he like he believed in me. And like uh, like my freshman year, I got bumped up to uh, JV, so I was practicing the varsity to older guys, you know. So it was kind of rough, you know, at the end, you know, going against the seniors and juniors and that. But I learned from it. So the next year, my sophomore year, I tried to work for it to get to that varsity spot, and I started ever since, you know. But he had a real big impact on me, you know. That's cool. Coaching me up, you know, what to work on, something like that, you know, and trying to believe in me. So yeah, so you want to give him a shout out. Coach V, appreciate you. <laughs> any, any, any questions for him, Mario? I, I do. I. So you've been here six years, right? Yes, sir. You weren't here from the beginning, but close, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. So you've seen some changes, you know, at least Muskegon, maybe some mm -hmm. ownership changes and mm -hmm. league changes. And what's been, would you say, the consist, the constant of being West Michigan Iron Man? That we still have great sponsors that want to see us play. We still got fans that wants to see from football, you know, during the spring, you know, cause I know we share with others, you know, mm -hmm. but they still want to see West Michigan Ironman football. That's the consistency. And that's what I like, you know, seeing the fans and everything. Awesome. That's, yep. a, that's great. Mm -hmm. So what do you do back in Louisiana? So you come here, play for us. Yes, sir. Just a stable. Mm -hmm. Go home. What do you do in the off season? Like, what do you, what do you do for an occupation? What do you do? I think it's pretty interesting. Well, I actually stay in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. I work at a local hospital. I just sit with patients, you know, for their safety or make sure they don't hurt themselves or hurt others, you know. So that's all. That's all. That's all. Yeah, that's he's all. Six, five, that's yeah. six five, 375 pounds, maybe not that big, well, whatever. Yeah. But it, you embody the gentle giant. I mean, you are a guy that, like, uh, passionate about what's going on. They're just a great, great dude. And uh, I got a huge heart. Yeah. So uh, it's pretty special. Pretty Appreciate cool. It. Yep. What other hobbies do you have? What else do you do? Well, I'm pretty low key, you know. I like to just chill, work out, hang with family, hang with friends, you know. Not to be all out, you know. So, yeah. oh yeah, pretty chill. Yeah. All right. Yep. Any other questions? I got 20 questions for him. Okay, we're gonna do a little segment. We're gonna do this with every player when we bring players in. We're gonna call it 20Q, 10Q. I'm gonna ask him 20 questions, pretty fast. He's got to answer them pretty fast, and then okay. he's got a chance to ask myself or or Mario or whoever the co-host is gonna be those 10 questions. Okay, so are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, let's here we go. So you gonna start the clock, somebody? We don't really have a clock. I'm just kidding. Um, but pretend you're on the clock. Okay. All right. You got like uh, 1.3 seconds to answer every question. Number one, what size shoe do you wear? 15. Where is your dream vacation spot? I already went to it, Hawaii. Hawaii. Favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, cookies and cream. Who's your Who's your hero? My parents. Your parents. What superpower do you wish you had? Take a bullet, somebody, like a, you take a bullet and bounce off oh, like that. I, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the D. White story premieres tonight downtown at the movie theater. Who's playing D. White? Terry Crews. Terry Crews. Who's the love interest? Like actress. Uh, well, I guess actress. Uh, love interest. Halle Berry. Halle Berry. Yeah. What is your favorite <laughs> beverage? Pepsi. Pepsi. What's yeah. the pet peeve that you have? Pass. Pass? Yeah. Okay, we'll come back to that one. Yeah. What is, who's your favorite teacher growing up? Her name was Miss Munster in high school. Miss Munster, what did she teach? Well, she was like a teacher that tried to get me in the, she did some English, but she was more, of, I don't know how to say it, but something like that, yeah. But yeah. she was real inspirational for me. Awesome, so yeah. cool. Uh, favorite movie? John Wick. John Wick. If you had a million dollars, couldn't spend it on yourself, what would you do with it? Get, uh, get back, you know, to community and put some away for my future kids, you know, so make sure they well right. taken care of. Same. Very responsible. Yeah. Very responsible. TV show you can watch over and over again. Blackish. Uh, what teammate do you think is the toughest? Current teammate do you think is Turn. the toughest? Ooh. Nick the Cracker. The Cracker. What teammate do you think has a screw loose? Abby. <laughs> <laughs> and what teammate would you allow to date your sister? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> Come on, uh, Scott, Mike Wynn. Mike Wynn. Mike okay. Wynn. Favorite song or artist? Favorite song, Kendrick Lamar. Okay. What was your favorite meal growing up? Spaghetti. What was the meal your mom made that you hated? 
I used to, I used to, I used to hate oatmeal. Hate oatmeal. Kid. Last question: What do you want to be remembered for? That I gave it my all, and I just gave a hundred percent. You know, so nice. That's it. Good. So there's twenty questions. Okay, now you got ten questions for us. I told him to keep him PG thirteen. Oh yeah. Okay, because I could, you know. Well, anyway. All right. All right. I got got the clock rolling. Got the clock rolling. Here we go. I probably. Me being here for six years, I probably can get to ask you this, but where are you originally from? Ypsilanti. I'm an Ipsy baby. All right, Born in Ypsilanti, just outside of Ann Arbor, but then I grew up in Jenison. Okay. What's it like living in Muskegon full year wise? It's awesome. It's awesome. The, the, the seasons are incredible, so it's, it's way, way different. You get to see a slice, but uh, fall football season in, in Muskegon, in Muskegon County, is second to none. All right. What made you want to become a coach of, of a professional team? Um, I love the ability to meet you guys and ha hopefully have a positive impact on you guys and give people an opportunity to chase their dreams. One of my favorite things after uh, Sterling Alexander had a touchdown at his last game this past week, he, after the game, he said to me, thanks for believing in me. And just giving guys that opportunity, being a part of that is uh, very fulfilling. Okay. Uh, how long you and Mrs. Smith have been married? Been married 28 years. We've been together since middle school. She's a lucky, lucky lady. Well, my next question was, <laughs> my next question was, how did y'all meet? Mr. Prosh's class. She was sitting in front of me. She had an Esprit shirt on. And I had some Genera pants. And I was, okay. I was fly. But uh, <laughs> she, I, I, was, I was a good looking dude. I was a catch. Okay. I'm a trophy husband. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you see yourself? Oh. <laughs> what do you see yourself in five years? Uh, I hope I'm still here with that West Michigan Ironman. I, I love being, love doing what we're doing here. I love coaching at Fruitport and what I'm doing right now. If I can keep doing what I'm doing and have and keep growing as making an impact, uh, that's what I want to do right. and have a million dollars. Okay. How do you manage coaching high school and professional? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge to a certain degree, but luckily that we're in two different seasons. Um, and we do try to infuse as much of that stuff as possible. You've been around, you've been to our weight room. Mm -hmm. Our guys know who you are. I remember one of the coolest things, David Kadena, who now is working with the Iron Men. You came to his signing when he signed to play in, in college football. And yeah. so that to me is, is, is a picture of what we try to do. You know, you guys impacting our players and vice versa. So um, it's a balance, but we try to really infuse that stuff together. Yeah. Do you ever stay in touch with the former players? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Former players. Well, Corey, Corey Ringer yeah, was a former yeah. player. He yeah, played yeah. with you at Green Bay yep. and he was a coach. I just talked to him on the way here. So I, I stay in touch with him. Um, you know, Carrington Thompson, I talk to him every once in a while. He's oh, yeah. out, out playing in, in the big leagues, you know. Oh, yeah. so, uh, so you're not going to get rid of me, D. White. All right. <laughs> Where do you want to see the Ironman go in the future? I would love to see us uh, leading the way and either establishing a league that's mm -hmm. going to be just like we are, you know, having teams that are very competitive and, and investing in their players, um, or we're going to be in, in a league that we can, we can do it. Because so I feel like you guys, the, the thing that we've got to get better at is getting you better competition. And we're doing everything we can, you know what I mean? Everything we can to kind of do that. Mario alluded to that earlier, yeah. you know, with our sponsors. And, and it's, it's a huge investment. Um, but we want that. We want that for this organization. Okay. Last one. Uh oh How thrilled or how excited that you're going to be a grandpa? I'm very excited. Oh, yeah. There are times that, like, it, uh, it gets you. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So I'm very excited. Can't wait for my granddaughter to get here. Okay. Yeah. That's it. All right. So that's okay. the end of that segment. Now he has a chance. He's going to establish the bar for the fifth grade trivia. He's going to have a, uh, three questions in English, social studies, science, and math. And we'll see how he does. Play along at home. I gave him a heads up. I gave him a heads up. He's been studying. He's been doing, uh, doing some, uh, some flashcards at home. So play along with us. See how well you can do. Um, see how you guys here in the crowd can do. Oh, well, like, these are not as easy as you think. So, okay. Which, what, do you want to pick a subject first? Math, English, social studies, social uh, studies or science? Oh, let's try social studies. Social studies. Okay. In which country of South Africa, excuse me, I already screwed up. In which country of South America is one of the seven wonders of the world, Machu Picchu, located? Where is Machu Picchu? In the hell? <laughs> South America. Is it around Brazil? Is it around Brazil? Anybody? Anybody? Peru. It is in Peru. Peru. So that one is wrong. You did not get that one right. That was close. Can yeah. you name the only state in America that grows coffee? Only state that grows coffee. I'll give you a hint. You went there on vacation. Hawaii. Hawaii. Ding, ding. You got that one right. Good job. All right. Can you name the largest lake in South America? 
I'm not sure I could name any lake in South America. Let's be honest. Yeah, fifth grade, right? Fifth grade at like MIT. Lake Michigan? Lake Michigan, no, in South America. It's Lake Titicaca, which oh, <laughs> is kind of funny. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you want English, math, or science? You, were one, you got one correct in that section. Well, let me get this one out the way, science. Science, okay. I, I thought these were the easier, and I'm not a science guy. Me neither. Okay, what name of species, what is the name of species that can, be, can survive in both land and water? What species can survive on both land and water? What type of group of species? Land and water. Anybody? Did you hear the peanut gallery? Because they're right. Oh. I'm gonna give it to you, amphibians, because you gotta help. I that was like that, that was like your uh, your phone a friend, your phone a friend, right here. Yeah. That's two. Okay, which planet is called the red planet? Mars. Mars. There we go. Now we're on a roll, baby. How many bones are there in the human skeleton? Okay, it got at least over over 200 it is over 200 guess 265 265 over 200 anybody from the peanut gallery 206 206 how many of you broken how many bones have you broken dislocated my my pinky that doesn't count well tore my meniscus so. that don't count i didn't know bone well. all right math or math or english Oh, uh, give me math. Give me math math sucks yeah what you had to look i had to look up i had to look up what, what this word meant okay what geometrical shape has no vertices? I don't know what the hell heck a vertice was. <laughs> I, had, I, I had an idea. Have zero idea. I have no clue. A sphere, a circle, a vertice is like the plural of vertical lines, I guess. Okay, so a sphere doesn't have any vertical lines. How many minutes are in seven half hours? Hold on a minute. Okay. How many minutes in seven half hours? Got time, five, four, two, three, two. Anybody, anybody? 210, math guy, I'm not gonna give him credit for it, but it is 210, 210. Last question, no, no, we got, we got English left. Last math question, yeah. and I knew this one. How many zeros are present in one Google? One Google? I had no idea, anybody know? This is interesting, I, I knew How many this. zeros? Like Google, in, in in the number Google, if you had like six Google, six Google Bitcoin, how many zeros are there? None. You think none? It was like tag team. What do you got? How many zeros? A hundred. A hundred. You are correct. That is correct. I hope the mic didn't pick up. Let me give him a hint. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Last three questions, and I was, I got one of these right. I got one of these right. But I think it's gonna be tough for you because you're not from Michigan. Okay, first question. Who wrote the book, The Little Mermaid? Don't know. Hans Christian Andersen. Who knows that? Everybody's thinking no, of Walt Disney. No damn Nobody grade knows grade. that. Nobody no. knows. That's a, that's a BS. I call BS on fifth grade trivia. Okay, um, la next one. This one's kind of funny. I did know this one. What? No, I did not know this one. I do it after I read it. I knew it. Anyway, um, what is the dot over a lowercase letter I in the English alphabet called? Like that little dot has a name to it. I never. And I think it's kind of a funny name. I don't, I don't remember being taught about that. Anybody? Anybody here? It's a tittle. Tittle. Yep. And so you can't make your tittles too big. Oh, right there. Tittle. Okay. And last question. What is the plural <clears throat> noun of deer? Plural deer. Plural. Kind of a trick question for the guy from Louisiana. All you hunters out there know this one. Oh. You want to help? You want to phone a friend? You want to phone a friend? Deer. Deer? Yeah, that is correct. It is deer. It's kind of a trick question. The plural of deer is deer. Yes, right. So you got one, two, three, four, five. You got six correct, I think. Is that correct? We'll have to watch the playback. But I think you got five correct. Five correct, so congratulations. You set the bar. Right now you are winning. Right now you're winning Appreciate the $100, it. and we'll see who we bring in next week, and I'll make the questions a little harder because I like you, D-White. I want you to win. So. Appreciate it. 
All right. Well, that's all we've got really for the show today. Um, our very first Forge podcast. These guys are like, thank Jesus it's done. We can move on with this thing. Um, but those of you that are watching home, we really, really appreciate it. Stay tuned uh, to our Facebook page. We have a brand new website that's going to be launching here pretty soon where you'll be able to get all this kind of stuff and all the different media that, that Billy and the team at Catch Mark Sportnet make for us. Um, any closing thoughts, Mario? Um, I just want to say, you know, to the fans of Muskegon and, the, and all the supporters that we've had and continue to have, and, you know, we just want to keep going and, 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 um, and getting these guys some quality uh, talent and some quality competition. And to keep this thing going, the buzz, there's a huge buzz in Muskegon right now about West Michigan Ironman. And, and, uh, and I love that. And, and I know our team loves that. And I just want to beat, uh, you know, Charlotte this weekend as well. D. White, anything you want to share with the fans? I appreciate your, your support. Watch us when we play Charlotte Thunders this week. It's going to be a so. game. So, hey, stay, stay tuned to our Facebook where that game will be streaming. Um, like I said, I think they're going to be able to stream it down here at Legend. If you can come down here and be with the Iron Nation, have a good time. It'll be a great time. Again, thank you to our sponsors that we highlighted today, Van Dyke Mortgage, uh, Mario Flores, the Lakeshore Team, Branch 131, um, and Catchmark Technologies and Catchmark Sportsnet. Um, and just to all the sponsors we have, thank you very much. Again, Nate Smith, head coach, West Michigan Ironman. Thanks for tuning in. Iron Strong. Whoa.